in Silicon Valley right now, it is a moment of reckoning for a number of reasons, and one of them is on the diversity front. Yep. At Facebook, 35% of Facebook's global employees are women. 28% of women hold leadership positions there. You're on the executive committee. You're one of the top people at Facebook. You're a woman. Sheryl Sandberg, Lori Goler, Carolyn yeah. Everson. But what does it need to be, Naomi? Is it is it parity at the top? Is it 50-50 throughout the company, men to women? What will make you feel like we are there. We need more women in power. We need parity and, you know, it'd be awesome if <laughs> women run the world. <laughs> um, but let's start with parity. So, as you said, um, we have a long way to go. 6% of um, Fortune 500 companies are run by women. 20% of Congress is female. 13 countries out of 195 are run by women. And so these numbers need to increase in order for there to be um, parity. Make the business case for for someone who would listen to this and say, why, why do you need parity? Why can't it just be about the person who's most qualified on paper, best for the job, without looking at their gender? Make the business argument for this. So when we talk about diversity, it's not just gender, it's race, yep. background, different perspectives. And diverse teams perform better. And so especially because we're building a product for two billion people around the world, our team needs to reflect that diversity. And what about uh, diversity in terms of racial diversity? Absolutely. Um, what do you do to get the numbers up? How much is it about active recruitment? Yeah. So. I think it's complex and I don't know what the answers are, but I do know what we're doing at Facebook. Obviously, Cheryl is a huge champion of diversity, gender, race, um, underrepresented minorities. Um, and so there are a lot of things that we do in terms of every step of the funnel. So we need to start young. One thing that we know is that um, Cheryl and Shrep, they actually wrote about this in Popular Mechanics, yeah. that three out of four women in middle school, girls in middle school, express an interest in STEM, yep. science, technology, engineering, and math, but then they don't pursue it. So something is happening between middle school and college yep. that is discouraging them from pursuing their interests. Did interest. you pursue that in I did not. No. It's a great question. I, and, you know, I think that's a real regret that I have is I'm not technical and I did not pursue, I was interested in it, but I think, you know, I didn't think I could do it. And so we have initiatives with young people, young girls, but also young people of color, trying to get them to pursue their their interests and not being discouraged. Pretty new numbers out of TechCrunch show that among the top 100 VC firms, the percent of female partners is now at 8%. 10% of venture money went to startups with at least one female founder between 2012 and Q3 of 2017, so about a five year span. What do you think when you consider those numbers? We have so much work to do. And so I have many friends that are both female VCs and female CEOs. And I think that um, we're starting to see more women in these fields on either side of it. But um, it just, I mean, like the numbers speak for themselves. And, you know, it's not surprising to me that we've seen so many people in Silicon Valley you know, talk about their stories with sexual harassment, these female CEOs being harassed by these male VCs in positions of power over them. And so I think that needs to change too in order to see more women in the field. Has that happened to you it in has, your career? You know, it hasn't. I feel so lucky that it really hasn't happened to me. I have Cheryl, Carolyn, Lori, incredible female peers. I have incredible male allies. I have two really incredible male mentors that I've worked with for over a decade. Mm -hmm. And so I feel really lucky that I have not personally experienced that, but clearly so many people have. And, you know, personally, I am a senior female leader at Facebook. Um, and I feel that responsibility to set an example, to do a really good job and to help my team succeed. And also, you know, bring up and support the women around me. Do you feel like there is a responsibility on you, an onus on you in this, what is clearly a moment of reckoning in Silicon Valley for women? I do, I do. Again, I think within Facebook, there, this is a watershed moment in Silicon Valley, I think in America, but at Facebook specifically, we have, and Cheryl has, and Lori has, 
done a really great job of making Facebook such a safe and supportive environment for all of us there. And so we have really strict policies. We have um, extensive training around sexual harassment. We have um, an HR team that you know enforces the policies. We do so much. And so I think it's really about how can we um, make sure that other tech companies and that other organizations in Silicon Valley can learn from some of these best practices and um, make systemic change. Who's your hero? Um, I have a lot of heroes. Um, you know, I think Cheryl, I was there the day that she joined Facebook and she just instantaneously became the hero for all of the girls at the office. We hadn't even met her yet and she was our hero really? simply because here was Cheryl, our new chief operating officer. This is before Lean In. Before Lean In, before everything and here was this woman who was going to be, you know, Mark's right hand and that just made us so proud and something to aspire to.